Good afternoon. I would like to welcome everyone today to our uh, November edition of the Pinal County Community College Governing Board meeting. We are grateful to see all of you here today. We are going to begin with this call to order and then we are going to engage in the Pledge of Allegiance and our colleague from the Superstition Mountain area is going to lead us in the pledge. Jack, would you do that for us? My pleasure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, wait a minute. I didn't know when to ask this, but I think we're getting there. Um, I wanted, uh, just a minute. Um, curriculum item and it's under deletion and there are two courses that are proposed for deletion i want a discussion on them there are the constitution and criminalistic which items could you tell me by number please um seven under curriculum proposals, the items are, you want the item numbers, the course numbers, that's all you have. Okay, so we're going to remove from the consent agenda item number seven. Not the whole item, just course deletion. So we have removed item seven from the consent agenda. Are there any other changes to the consent agenda that any members of the board would like to remove at this time? Uh, the chair would entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda minus seven, which has been removed. I move to- uh, I've got a motion, do I have a second? I have a motion, second. I have a motion and a second to accept the consent agenda uh, as presented with the exception of item number seven, which has been removed. Those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed by saying nay. I'm going to abstain. There was one other item I wanted to pull for discussion and it was, um, Second read, it's 9.1, conflict of interest. So item 9.1, also you wanted removed. Yes, please. But Nanny voted no. No. Um, according to Robert's rules, once we have voted, we cannot go back and change. Okay, then I'm going to have to uh, abstain. Okay, I have um, four, I'm counting right, aren't I? Four positive votes and one negative vote um, on the, uh, the agenda item, which was just consented, the consent agenda. It's an abstention. Was it an abstention? Yes. Or a, okay, I, I heard nay, I'm so sorry. So it's an abstention. It's an abstention. <clears throat> All right, now item seven has been removed from the consent agenda and is now, I think, appropriate at this time to address. Uh, Mary Kay Gilliland, would you help us with this, please? Um, Dr. Banks, would you please address your issues to Dr. Gilliland? Uh, 
under deleted courses. Just a minute. Don't have my reading glasses on, so no way to pull it up. Under deleted courses, the first deleted course that I have concerns about is constitutional law. No, I understand that there is a process, the curriculum committee, under the guidance of Dr. Mary Kay, uh, follows guidelines. It, they may have deleted this course, um, proposed deleting this course because of low enrollment. I am very sorry to see this course on the chop block because the largest employer we have near our main campus in particular is government. Constitutional law, the understandings of that area are important for our students to have in order to work in government and be successful or to internship. That is why I'm suggesting that this course not be deleted. The second course, criminalistics, um, I looked at the catalog of 17 to 18 uh, f for a description of this course. And it appears to be a vital course in terms of methodologies of how one would come to a conclusion whether a criminal act has taken place. And of course, the final decision maker is the judge. However, I think this course is important because, again, we have a large number of government uh, people who are going to be changing over and they're going to be hiring new people. The second thing is that I started working with the Abuse and Battered Women's um, Organization in Casa Grande. They could only find one person to do advocacy. They have right now somewhere around 30 women. And the person who is their advocate had been trained in criminal law. She has to go to court four days a week to defend cases of women who are brought to the shelter. Again, I would hate to see this course eliminated. That's my say. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Response?
Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scream. Um, <clears throat> there may be a solution to this. Um, Hillsdale College, which I believe, well, it's the only college in the U.S. that doesn't accept federal funding. So it can do a lot with its curriculum. They have a course called Constitution 101 for free. Um, what needs to be done is to find out if that course is transferable. So it still remains available to the student. It's a very serious problem in um, the state alone, and particularly the legislature. Um, and that problem was cited by the Morris, Morrison Institute a decade ago, and it persists. OK, I'm going to look into that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mary Kay. Are there any comments relative to item 7 under action items? consent agenda. This is, item 7 is a action item, therefore it is appropriate for us to move forward and make a decision on item 7, approved curriculum proposals fall in 2019. What is the intent and pleasure of the board? I have a motion to approve. Very good. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve curriculum proposals, item 7, fall 2019. Further discussion? With that, uh, all those in favor of approval, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed by saying nay? Motion carries unanimously. Um, I abstain. Uh, one abstention. Thank you very much. I will remember to just call for abstention in the future. I apologize for that. Thank you very much. All right, moving then forward to to, um, to informational items. Uh, item 10 is policies for first reading. Brandy Clark. Did I miss something? No, they were on the consent agenda. Oh, they were no. all on the consent agenda. Okay, I'm yes. sorry. Yes, no, you are correct. <laughs> it's not beyond my capacity to do something like that, Brandon. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Good afternoon, Governing Board President Gibson, Governing Board members, President Elliott, um, Mary Lou, staff, students, and guests. This afternoon, I present to you the first reading of the following three policies, our volunteers policy, our position creation and review policy, and the use of tobacco products. Um, the first reading is simply for your review only, so I'd be happy to entertain any questions that you may have at this time. And all three of these policies are, are simply revisions to existing policies. Questions or comments? Dan, uh, that was one question I had. Um, in the summary, it mentions the volunteer as a, as a revision, but in the um, overview on volunteers it says it's a new policy so is it I apologize it is a revision it's a revision to an existing policy okay so there'll still be a volunteers policy because I know some of those yes. are consolidating and yes. regroup too yes. all right thank you that's all I have further comments or questions on volunteers no 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 comment on volunteers but other ones On a different policy. Oh, that's on. Okay, so now I'm confused. Which policy are we? Are you wondering about? Are you familiar? 
Are you are you talking? Are you? I was just in terms <coughs> of item ten. Excuse me for shouting there, but this is sensitive today. Uh, could you s summarize for the board uh, the basic changes on use of tobacco products versus what we had? Oh, I know I read the agenda on it, but uh, there really weren't there really were not many okay. large changes at all. Okay. Um, Basically, we refer in the policy to the statute. We follow the Arizona statute in reference okay. to smoking 20 feet away from any doorway. Um, we don't allow any, um, you know, any type of tobacco products, including vaping, um, near the doorways there. So we, it's very simple, and we just refer it back to the statute. That was my question. We are in the process of um, designating some smoking areas on sure. each campus. Um, that will be uh, clearly uh, it has some clear signage and stuff. So we're in the process of doing that. But so that's basically, we're including the use of vapor mm -hmm. in the same category as tobacco. Yes. Okay. And as a follow-up question, uh, you mentioned in the uh, background that a drug and alcohol policy will will be um, developed as well. Will that continue to be separate, or once it's developed, will it roll into uh, That will be something separate. It will be a separate policy, and that's in the process right now. Okay, thank you. Item 10 is a informational item only. There will be no action taken, but um, we will... Um, what we will do, I would invite each member of the board to re review and, um, and ponder these policies when they come on our agenda for the next time that we'll be ready to act on them. So if you have any feedback um, on any of these policies that have been presented, if you would please provide feedback to um, Dr. Elliott. Yeah, before the second reading for our next meeting. Thank you. Next item is item 11 under reports and um, Arizona Association of Community College Trustees report, Dr. Banks. Um, our meeting for November was canceled, but December 7th, I believe, I don't have a calendar in front of me and I didn't bring my cell phone, so. <laughs> Um, anyway, the first Saturday of, or second Saturday of December, we will have a full meeting. Um, I had been in touch with Jane Strain, who's president of the AACCT, and she um, said that when she gets back from Florida, she'll send out the report that was intended for us to get before Thanksgiving. So no turkey here. Um, but wait until next month. And the one thing to note is as you're making your schedules for the first quarter of next year in February, there's the National Association of Community College Trustees um, conference coming up. We will, Arizona, again, like with the last conference, will have a breakfast. And um, I hope the trustee will come. I know it's the middle of winter. We could all be stuck on the runway, but it's good to mix with um, other trustees. Thanks, Jack. Thank you for your report and your invitation. We appreciate it. Next item. Item 12, report from Central Arizona College President, District Update, Dr. Elliott. Thank you, President Gibson. Um, good afternoon, Board of Governors, faculty, staff, and other guests. 
It is my privilege and pleasure to provide a district update. Um, first of all, I want to share with you that as part of the project from the Alliance for Innovation and Transformation in Higher Education Summer Institute, uh, the team that attended will beginning on embarking on interviewing our students, uh, current, past, and potential about their experience with Central Arizona College to determine key opportunities to transform our student experience. Additionally, to date, I have met with over 200 employees individually, and the key themes that continue to emerge include appreciation for the visiting with the VPs, and that's when the VPs go around to every campus and provide uh, Q&A opportunities, the Trust Edge initiatives that we've been talking about for the past year, the work that's getting ready to begin um, in depth on the Guided Pathways um, model, uh, the new online employee trainings that we have been provided. Uh, people will very much appreciate that. Obviously, our new facilities are on top of the list. And improved opportunities that talent development has implemented for individuals to have upward mobility options. The areas that continue to need our attention, um, this is just a few. Obviously, there's probably more than this. But some of our processes are some, sometimes considered slow and laborious. Uh, so we'll be looking at those, uh, updating computer hardware and connectivity. Some of our campuses struggle with connectivity, and some of our computers are, are aging, and the log on time is of concern. Uh, customer service, we can improve in customer service not only with our students, but with each other. And communication continues to be an area that we um, can focus our attention on. Um, I will continue these these one-on-one -on -one meetings with individual employees uh, throughout uh, the month of December, January, and hopefully will be completed by February. So uh, they have been very beneficial. As you know, our cross-country team won the NJCA National Championships, and I think um, board member um, Yarrington pointed out again, it's pretty much a, a common theme. Also, um, our student, Jaron Hemphill, he's a graphic design student. He was recently notified that the poster he designed for the Amazon Prime original series, Jack Ryan, was selected as, as a winning entry. So when you see the, the media on that, that's our student who created that visual graphic. Uh, the math department recently hosted the area middle school math contest at the corporate center. And um, during the month, over 150 students representing 14 high schools throughout the FFA South Central District attended the midwinter career development event at Central Arizona College, so we were really proud to host them. And finally, I just want to remind you that the annual President's Holiday Reception and Open House will be held on December 4th from 2 to 5 in the President's Office, and I hope you're all able to attend. And that completes my report. If you have any questions, I'm happy to entertain them. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Good report. Next item is item 13, Business Affairs Report. Chris Wodka. Thank you, and thank you, and good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Governing Board Members, Madam President, Secretary, colleagues, and any guests in attendance today. Uh, three items on the agenda today. First one is the monthly budget report. And as I mentioned last month, we're still having a little t uh, technical difficulties in our Nexus system talking to our financial system, but we're getting closer on that in, in regards to that as the anticipated um, go live date is in January, January 7th to be exact as we come back from our break. However, these reports do show all of our expenditures through the first four months of the fiscal year, which is through the end of October. And the total percentage of general fund expenditures and committed funds are at about 76.7% compared to about 75.98% last year, so it's about a 0.73% increase from October of the previous year. Um, so I'll entertain any questions on the budget report. Mr. Miller. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned that the student revenue and scholarship expense data are absent uh, from, from the preliminary report. Could you give us just a you know, um, uh, level of, of um, our percentage that that represents? In other words, uh, are we talking a, a large amount of um, um, difference in revenue compared to the scholarship expense? 
Well, it, it would represent about uh, the first fall semester's worth. So there's typically two heavy periods of the revenues, the first um, quarter to five months of the year, meaning August through um, November typically, and then again January through March. So um, we're about a halfway of where we should be in terms of the revenues, because that's where most of our revenues come through in terms of the scholarships and tuition revenues. All right. I'm, I'm just trying to understand if it's a if it's a delay because of the processing that you're not able to put it in here. It just takes a while for those to catch up, or is it? Uh, are you not confident in the data that you are receiving from the system based on the or on these two categories of student revenue and the scholarship expense? Right. It, it's not a matter of confidence. It's a matter of the processing to make sure everything is processed from the Nexus system to the finance system, which is not live currently. So therefore, as we're building that bridge and verifying all the data from the uh, student side over to currently we're still on the banner side, on the finance end. So until that information the first six months is transferred completely over, then I have the confidence level of reporting those figures. Right. But as you're looking, as you and your staff are looking at the, each of the line items and the, the journal entries, et cetera, mm -hmm. you're, you're comfortable with what? Um, what you're seeing there? Oh yes, absolutely. Line I mean, line. Bank recs have been completed and things of that nature, but it's been a it's been a manual process versus a automated process. Understand? Okay. And I had a second question about the uh, restricted funds. Uh, in in our board package, uh, there are several line items where we seem to be um, um, overextended. Now I know that there's pay periods and, and other things, uh, so they don't completely line up. But um, it seemed like um, well, I guess my question is, on those overextensions, are we using cash reserve money, or how is that, how is that uh, accounted for? You'd have to give me a particular example okay. that you're looking at, perhaps. Yeah. They're on page 8, the restricted funds. Yeah, hold on a second there. Because the, these are all grant funds, which may or may not have the same fiscal year as the college. Okay. So there could be timing differences in terms of revenues and expenditures. A number of these grants end uh, the federal year, which is the end of September. Okay. Uh, the, the top one is a federal college work study. and okay. shows that we have a ba uh, cash balance of a negative $16,000. So I, I know that that's how it's reported, but mm -hmm. you can't really take money from another restricted fund. So my question is, is, is the college, in essence, loaning the federal college work study line item, uh, that's 16000 until that money is? Until the money comes in, right, until okay. it's drawn down from the government. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Thank you very much. Review of awarded bids? Yes, sir. Uh, we have four this month. First one is admin services from Campus Works Incorporated for Bradenton, Florida, in the amount of 137665 and that is to contract for the project manager for the remainder of the implementation of the ERP. Second one is cabling communication system services, IES Commercial Inc., Tempe, Arizona, for 40000 and that is to create an open purchase order for uh, cabling communication services for the entire fiscal year. Third one is assistance to move towards guided pathways, AACC Baltimore, Maryland, 45000 This is our participation in the Pathways Project 2.0, and this is year two of three. And the last one is skills equipment for Amatrol NIMS IMT program, Klein Educational Systems LLC out of Davis, California. 639505 and that is to purchase, excuse me, equipment and uh, supplies to train for technology, for industrial technology program with funds from the ACA, which is the Arizona Community, uh, Arizona Commerce Authority. Any questions on these bids? Questions, questions on bids? No questions. Okay, and the third and last item is an ERP update. You have a summary of the uh, updates since our last meeting in October. Uh, one thing I just want to add to that that's not included in this summary is that we started this week, meaning yesterday, 
and we have a day uh, all day all, all day yesterday all day tomorrow and two days next week I believe it's Monday and Wednesday where we have the training on the new system so we have four modules the entire um, institution was invited for these training sessions and the four modules are procurement their travel and expense management um, a finance budget managers piece and payroll and talent development piece. So that was well attended yesterday for our first day and three full days remaining on that. Um, and then obviously we'll have additional uh, training and hand holding when we go live. Any questions? Thank you very much. Appreciate your report. Thank you. Item 14 is monitoring reports. This month it is outcome three. And we will turn the microphone to Jenny Cardenas and Mary Kay Gilliland. Hello, good afternoon, President Gibson, uh, Governing Board, Dr. Elliott, Mary Lou, colleagues, students, and guests. Um, what we're focusing on today is outcome three, which is related to workforce and ensuring students acquire the skills necessary for job placement um, and that meet the employer needs within the county as well. So I'm going to cover the first section, um, section 3.1, which is a percentage of graduates employed, and then Dr. Gilliland will cover uh, the next four sections. So the first is looking at the percentage of graduates who are employed. Um, one method of providing this is um, job placement once the student has graduated from CAC. And we don't have a target for this, this yet. The board hasn't set a target for it, being that we haven't collected this data in the past, so this is brand new for us. Um, we actually did begin as a college. There have been, and I, I should say, there have been departments who have collected this data, but as an institution, this is something we haven't done um, in the past. So in the spring, we had 366 individual graduates that were sent a survey. Of those 366, 122 of the students responded. And from those 122, 69% of them indicated that they were employed after graduation. And 53% of those of that student population indicated that they were employed in the area where they received their degree or certificate. Um, so those are two focuses that we've, we would like to look at for the coming years. Um, and we think that we have a, a really good process at this point in place uh, that, we, that we can continue to improve upon. So the first of the things that we did um, was really determining who would be the owner for the graduation survey. And in the past, our focus on the graduation survey was a little bit different. It was housed in the registration office. Um, and what we've decided at this point is it will be housed within career services and institutional research. So collaboratively, they'll work on, on putting this together um, with a group, of course, who will assist with that. We have benchmarked other colleges to determine their process. And ironically, I sent out um, to the listserv of vice presidents throughout the, the state and asked, how are you collecting your graduation data? And the, the response that I got back was, well, let us know how you guys are going to do it and we'll give it a try. So it's, it's a challenge that community, college or community colleges are facing not only in Arizona but across the nation is really staying connected with our students once they've graduated and, and helping them to provide us information to further help um, additional students. So again, we have some divisions that do very well that have stayed very connected with their student populations and others, many of our students in, for instance, associative degree or associative arts degrees and things like that that are a little bit more difficult to, to get them to respond. Um, so the graduation survey was created. We did pilot it, as I indicated, for the spring of 2018. Information was sent out in the graduation letters that students received, as well as to their student email account. The problem is, when students graduate from CAC, many times they no longer check their student email account. So that's kind of where our um, planned improvements are coming in. And we also uh, did do follow-up phone calls with the graduates as well. So the planned improvements that are coming is we will have surveys that go out three times a year. So they'll go out just after our August graduates, after our December graduates, and after our May graduates to ensure that we capture each of those different groups um, when they're closest to the time they ended their, their time at CAC. We are using student employees to conduct the follow-up phone calls and providing them with scripts and ways of being able to collect the data so that we have accurate and consistent data that's being collected. And we also are working to um, send the survey links to the students, not only in their graduation application, but also to their personal email accounts, opposed to just their CAC email accounts, which we're now capturing differently in, in our Nexus system. Um, and then the last is really wanting to review the data and see which, which areas our students, of our students who are going into um, employment in their 
chosen um, degree area, which departments are they going, or which areas are they going into? So really diving into that a little bit more. So now Dr. Gilliland will answer or talk about the next four. Good afternoon, President Gibson, members of the board, Dr. Elliott, colleagues, students, and guests. Um, continuing on, um, I have four items to go through quickly. Um, that have to do with workforce training and um, skilled trades and uh, occupational training um, here at the college. So um, the first item we have up here is the percentage of occupational program um, graduates who are earning an industry recognized credential. Um, one of the ways in which we can um, truly demonstrate that our students are um, being prepared for the workforce is to have them earn a credential that is, is certified um, for employment. And um, what we are seeing is that over the course of three years, we have actually a slight decline in the number of our students percentage-wise who have earned an industry-recognized um, uh, certification, um, and which seems a little perplexing because we're putting a lot of effort into those programs. Um, I believe that this may actually have to do with the fact that we're uh, representing this in percentages rather than in flat numbers. Um, we have more students who are in these programs now, and so um, by percentage of, of those who are actually completing the degrees, we, we may be seeing a slight dip uh, of those who are going straight on to the um, certification exams. Um, we've also um, seen a couple of other uh, factors. Uh, some of our areas, high-skilled high, um, high trade areas, are so um, in such high demand that students are being hired before they complete. Um, and so that's something that we can address in our improvements uh, because, of course, it is better if they do complete the credentials or the, cer uh, the certificates or the degrees and um, actually take the exams. And then finally, we are adding um, additional programs, and not all of them um, reflect uh, an alignment with industry certifications just yet, but we're working towards that. So um, I think all in all, we're making great progress towards offering programs that are very employable for our students, and we're getting a lot of student interest in those areas. Um, item 3.3, um, and we don't have a graph here. This is um, an area that um, we haven't been able to measure over a long period of time. Um, one of the methods that we can uh, demonstrate that CAC is providing um, skilled workers to the community, providing the right kind of, of training, um, is through our employer satisfaction survey. Um, we have not um, gathered this information over a long period of time. Um, the survey actually does include a variety of stakeholders, and um, we were able to demonstrate that 84% of CAC's partners are pleased uh, with the college, uh, with their relationship with the college, but at this point in time, the, the survey had not um, separated out those who were actually employers. So the satisfaction rating is just generally our, our community partnership satisfaction. Um, so we are redoing that survey to add in questions specifically for employers so that going forward we can get a better measure of employer satisfaction as opposed to just partner or community satisfaction with the college. Um, item 3.4. Um, reflects FTSE, or the uh, full-time uh, student equivalents enrolled in occupational courses. Um, so again, uh, another method of ensuring that we are providing the kinds of training that the community wants, uh, providing uh, training uh, for students to go directly into employment, is looking at the number of students who are actually enrolled in these kinds of programs. Um, a target of 1,750, 1,750 was selected for the strategic plan. Um, as a target um, in terms of enrollment of students in these occupational courses. Um, we have um, Arizona Rural Colleges are a little bit below that target, and Central Arizona College in this first year is just below the Arizona average, uh, but not by a great amount. And again, this is the first year of measuring this in quite this way. Um, we're putting a lot of effort and energy into these programs, and I believe that we're going to see this number in increase over time. Um, let's see. Um, finally, um, item 3.5 um, looks at workforce training in non-credit hours. Along with our degreed programs, our certificates and degrees in our occupational areas, um, we have historically offered some workforce development training, um, which is for non-credit. 
Uh, we, again, have not measured this over a long period of time, um, but it's something that we are putting a lot more emphasis on. Um, so the college is currently in the process of strengthening its non-credit workforce training. Um, and I actually can report happily, anecdotally, that we have been providing quite a lot of non-credit training. We've shifted our focus. Um, this used to be married with our community education program. We've shifted the focus to put this into the back into the career technical education or skilled trades areas. So a lot of our uh, partners that we've been working with in terms of providing um, certif certificates and degree training have also come to us and asked for shorter term training for their current employees. Uh, we just signed a memorandum of an, uh, understanding of agreement with um, Landscape Unlimited, a new partner, uh, who have come to us and asked for short-term three-hour training for existing employees. So uh, we've also been working with Sunt and with others uh, to offer this kind of training, and I think we're going to see an, an uptake um, in this as well. All right, if we shift to the improvements, uh, the recent improvements and the planned improvements, um, we have taken a number of measures already, I think, to enhance these areas. Um, one of the outgrowths of our um, TACT grant, our Trade Act Agreement grant that focused on the skilled trades, um, was to hire a career navigator, somebody who is actively involved in, in, um, as a liaison with the community, with our industry partners, uh, to help bring in students from high schools and from other areas, um, and specifically to recruit for the skilled trades. Um, just this past year, um, through our innovative, uh, uh, one of our innovative chairs, actually two of our chairs, we've established a new partnership with Florence High School um, to bring in students um, for concurrent enrollment. We have 60 new students coming in uh, from a high school that did not send us students for concurrent enrollment in the skilled trades before. So this is a huge increase in the number of students who are currently in our pipeline. These students are actually scheduled to graduate from CAC at the same time they, they finish high school. Uh, so um, that would be an amazing accomplishment if we get all of those students through. Um, and then finally, again, we really strengthen our partnerships with local industry to better attract, retain, and, and to graduate students um, in the skilled trades. And Lucid and Sunt are among our, our you know, earliest partners, but we are branching out and, and creating new partnerships as we are here today. So um, those are growing. Um, we have a number of planned improvements. Some of those we've spoken about already with guided pathways. Um, but we're also expanding um, apprenticeship programs uh, with SUNT, with Re Resolution Copper, um, and we are looking to expand those partnerships um, much more broadly so that students get some training um, as a part of their um, programs with us, uh, essentially an opportunity for an extended job interview, uh, and uh, we believe that those will result in, in um, both enhancing uh, the employment of our graduates and also attracting more students to our programs and more partnerships from the community. Um, we're looking at evaluating the decrease in the graduates earning an industry recognized credential. Again, I alluded to a few things that may be causing that, but we don't really know for sure. Those were sort of anecdotal um, responses on my part, and we want to dig in and measure that and actually see what's happening um, and to see if we can find additional ways to improve um, those outcomes. Um, and then we are um, moving forward to hire a dean of career and professional programs. Um, and we will be hiring a new uh, director of workforce training, and we will shift uh, the area that that reports up through. That'll be a hire that comes after the dean. So um, we're looking at those two new positions that will actually probably really improve uh, what's going on in these areas. Right now, we're leaning on the goodwill of our existing employees and our, our deans and our chairs. Uh, and everybody's doing a great job, but they're stretched quite, quite far. So um, I think that will make a difference. Any questions I can answer? I just want to compliment the individuals or group of people that have been out the last couple of weeks. I had an opportunity this morning to read them very thoroughly. And uh, in particular, I like the photographs of a particular individual who I won't name. <laughs> but uh, the statistics are actually phenomenal. And I'm a statistics guy. When I see statistics like this, well presented at the college, so showing where we've been and where our future's have been, it's just. Uh, you guys did a great job on this, so whoever's responsible for this, I would suggest everybody read it and then con congratulate the people that did it all. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I don't want to sound like a grouch today, <laughs> but to this questions. is the third time I'm requesting this. 
the percentages that are displayed on the measurement bars, those measurement, those percentages, can the person who prepares that data put in a numerator and denominator so we know if 63% is a sample of five or 500. Yes, I will carry forward that request, and I think we can do that. Thank um, you. Which, which one, Deborah? On all of these, or? On, on all of them, they all, and I said this a year ago, and mid-year, and I'm just repeating it now. I will send you the Arizona Strategic Vision Report. I think I send that to you guys every year anyway. That is where this data comes from, and it has all the explanations of the data elements that you're asking for. So I'll send that to you. Okay, but what, so what I get paranoid about is when our press, which we have no control over by town and area, um, gets a hold of this data, and they're going, people are asking the same question. You know, they say, this looks nice, 63% looks real good. How many, how many s were in the sample? That's it. Okay, we, we can get that for you. Any other questions? Mr. Miller. Um, yeah, I've actually been looking forward to talking about this particular outcome. Um, and since you're at the podium, it's not not bad. <laughs> uh, just, no, um, it's fine. I'm happy to answer questions. Yeah. So uh, 3.2, uh, could you remind me again what it means by industry industrial recognized credential? Okay, so we're, we're including a couple of things in that. Um, from the skilled trades area, this would be like national or um, some kind of uh, certification exam um, or certification based on our curriculum. So like the NIMS certification, um, I'm not remembering a lot of them off Welding. the top of my head, but a number of those. Right. Um, we also would be including in those um, some of the certifications from the health career areas. Okay. But as far as the advanced technology, that's not quite in the, in the mainstream. It's pretty uh, revolutionary. Right, and I don't believe that there is a certification for that. So that would be one of those areas where we have students who are in programs and completing programs but may not be sitting for some kind of national certification at this point. Okay. And 3.1 uh, and 3.3, .3, so it's really both for the two of you. Um, the, um, you had mentioned uh, some business partners in uh, gathering the statistics. I, I would be comfortable in saying that CAC has a best-in-class partnership with a lot of the businesses, um, probably under-recognized for, for that. But um, how are you able to leverage that partnership in getting some of this statistical data? Well, I, one of the things that we did recently is we really took a good look at our list of community partners and realized that we had been including in that list, people that we really don't work with very closely anymore. These were older partners, and we've updated it to reflect some of our newer partners in that list, so we believe we're going to get more accurate data back. Um, and then our um, institutional effectiveness office is also creating a, a separate survey question, so they'll separate out general community satisfaction from employer satisfaction. So there'll be an extra question in there for actual employers that we work with fairly closely. And I think we'll get, again, just clearer, better data from that, so. Okay, good. And then specifically on uh, 3.1, um, you had said that uh, you send the survey out with the, uh, with the diploma or graduation uh, paperwork. Um, is there a, would it be appropriate to have a time delay? Like, have you, were you employed within 180 days of, of graduation or something like that? Maybe you're doing that, I just didn't hear that as part of the criteria. No, actually, one of the recent or one of the planned improvements that we have is creating that timeline that says the first communication we'll send out will be in the graduation letter. Then a timeline that shows a month later, or three months later, or six months later, so that we can continue to follow up with those students, knowing that for many of them, they may not, they may not have a job right away, but.
but we want to catch them within that within that year period. So it's an ongoing. Um, that's the reason that we've selected to have student employees who are going to be making the phone calls and collecting the data, so they can go back and reach out to students at different touch points to to gather that information. Right, and then uh, only part of the outcome I understand um, uh, could could be captured in this way, but we have a very strong relationship with the Pinal County Board of Supervisors mm -hmm. and with all their partners, all the businesses that are within Pinal County. Um, it, is there a way to leverage that uh, knowledge base or that that uh, partnership to uh, to get uh, in-county data? Um, and then that's the first part. And then the second part is, you know, obviously not everybody is going to be working in Pinal County, not all our right. graduates. Mm -hmm. What percentage are are we um, outsourcing to, uh, you know, sister counties in the area? And that we certainly um, will be gathering with the surveys is letting us know not only where they're working or the <coughs> institution they're working for or the business and industry they're working for, but also where is it located. So we would ask that question as a part of it. We can certainly look into working with Pinal County to see if, if there is a way that they can assist us with determining the number of employees that they are aware of from CSU. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Nice job. Other questions? I do have one, if I might. Yes. Um, I'm not sure which number it is, but the number was, it was, the issue was the employer satisfaction survey. Okay. Yeah, that was, I think, 33, three, right up there. Yes, and I believe the number was 84% were in favor. Um, Satisfied generally it, with CAC. Surveys yes. are surveys. I, I understand that. Uh, are we comfortable with 84% or Actually, that is another monitoring report measure, and you have a goal set higher, and that is, um, you're, you're testing my memory here, I think it's outcome four. So we will see that overall okay. in the next month, and then I cannot remember off the top of my head what the target was set, but the answer was no, you weren't satisfied with 84%, and it was set higher. Thank you. I'll defer my question until next time. <laughs> okay. You're just ahead of the game. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We have reached the end of our agenda. Our next board meeting is January 15th, 2019 at the Signal Peak Campus. I declare this meeting adjourned.